Yes, a very good morning to all of you. Right, so I hope all of you are able to see me and are able to hear me also. Right, if you could just confirm if the audio video is all clear. Right, so that we can begin with our discussion. Yes, everyone, all of you joined in. Right, please uh, mute the video audio at your end whenever I tell you you could uh, start it. But just on the chat box, you could mention about it. Right, that you have uh, joined in. Yes, so how have you been doing? All great? Right? Okay, good morning. Audio, video, all clear. Okay, that's great. Okay, right. So, welcome. A uh, very warm welcome to all of you to the CA final, right? Advanced Auditing Assurance and Professional Ethics. You know, that's the first change which we need to know that in the old syllabus, you know, it used to be called as Advanced Auditing and Professional Ethics. But now what they've done over there is that they've added the word Advanced Auditing Assurance and the Professional Ethics. Because apart from audit also, we provide a lot of other assurance services. That is why now what is the name of the subject? Advanced Auditing, Comma, Assurance and the Professional Ethics. Right? So at intermediate level already you've studied the audit in your articleship. Also you've done the audit. And now as a chartered accountant, right? You started your journey. You finished your 10th standard. Then it was decided to do commerce you know, for majority of you. Then after that you came to the foundation. Then foundation, MCQ circling and then done. Then after that that intermediate then the article ship and then you were the people who were in the you know dwindling situation can okay, new syllabus my attempt what will be applicable old syllabus new syllabus what is the transition i don't know when i should start the classes right so you had lot of anticipation to be done but finally now you know that you have to write down your exams in the new syllabus right you have the luxury of writing only six papers right so because two papers have been made into the self paced learning module that is the law in the group one and the costing in the group two that is your SCMPE right but there are some subjects which are like you know never going to be off the syllabus like FR, FM and then apart from that the audit, DT and IDT and then all these five subjects put together you know 2020 marks they've made a sixth subject over there called as the multidisciplinary case study right so yes that's the happy part of the news that you know you just have not just just may not be the correct word but yeah you have the uh uh, six subjects to study but lot of other work to be done like you know self-paced learning module and ITT and some orientation courses and all of that right so that continues to be there okay right so now with all of that let's begin this is our CA final right fast track batch so before the students took the registration for this batch some of them had an apprehension okay oh it is fast track so will it cover the entire syllabus right you know what is how many time and all of that so let me give you an outline of what is a fast track batch okay one i have just finished with a regular batch which went around like 175 hours or so and this is a fast track batch which has been planned for 90 plus hours right so anything which is more than 90 it is going to be between 90 to 100 hours okay will i be covering the entire syllabus in the fast track batch yes Right, then what is going to be the difference between a fast track and a regular batch over here? Right, so here probably the number of times that we repeat a particular concept or the detailed multiple types of understanding which we go through, it may, may be reduced to a certain extent. Right, so obviously without compromising on the content or so, right, we will be covering the entire syllabus but just at a little bit of the different pace. Right, you won't even, uh, you know, find out okay, you, whether you're doing a regular regular batch or a fast track batch you know that comfortable you will be with the pace and the syllabus of the batch but only little bit I need cooperation from all of you so before I tell you anything else right I just need one you know cooperation from all of you some like a ritual some like a habit when you are attending this batch so that you get the maximum benefit benefit from this batch right so I hope you have a notebook in front of you maybe probably hopefully the textbooks would have already reached to you but if not then at least the notebook is in front of you a pen is there in your hand and a notebook in front of you and you can start writing right that what you have to do today and tomorrow right so what you have to do today 
right what you need to do today is that whatever we have studied today what that you need to revise so today day one whatever we are going to study that you are going to revise and whatever we are going to study tomorrow that you are going to reach right so whatever we've already studied that you are going to revise and whatever i'll tell you that tomorrow these are the topics or the chapters which we will be discussing so that you need to read right so read whatever we are going to study on the next day and revise whatever we've studied on the that particular day of the class and apart from that just ensure that your notes are completed right so whatever crisp you know whatever like one day before the exam that's a million dollar question okay how to revise the entire subject in one and a half day before the exam or how many times i revise or how i can revise the subject of audit so for that you need to prepare your own notes on the basis of what we discuss in the class and what charts we make in the class right so immediately okay whatever is discussed today for that whatever notes i have made plus whatever notes you would like to make please ensure that those notes are prepared right so one you need to revise whatever we've studied second you need to read what we are going to study on the next day third you need to prepare your notes your charts whatever you know whatever you need to prepare or condense or you know summarize that particular topic chapter concept you need to prepare that immediately you can't keep it on hold at all and fourth thing what you need to do is that whatever concept topic or anything that we have discussed for that whatever question answers are there or whatever mcqs are there all of that you need to go through Right, so that's why the timing of the class has been kept as nine to two, right? And then after that, you know, you have one more set. Like you know, you can devote more two three hours for the study of the subject of audit till the time the class is going on, so that you get the maximum benefit from the class. I hope everybody is able to capture my words. You're getting what I say, right? What did I tell you? Point number one, you revise whatever we studied in class. Point number two. you read whatever the next day we are going to discuss point number 3 you ensure that you prepared all the notes all the charts all the markings of whatever is discussed you are in line with the class attuned and fourth whatever is discussed in the class for that whatever questions and answers are available in the book whether you have gone through all those question and answer let it be a 10 mark no 10 mark question but let it be a 5 mark 4 mark question or you know let it be an mcq 2 mark 1 mark or whatever it is whatever content is available whether you have studied okay right so revise read prepare notes and question and answer perfect right so this is a ritual right which you need to follow every day for the entire duration of the patch right i don't need to tell you i have already pro i'm doing the programming for you okay this is how we need to go about the patch right clear to all of you okay right then after that now first i will give you an outline of the syllabus of what all chapters are there in our syllabus and then after that how we will be proceeding what will be the flow of our batch right what is going to be the flow of our discussion right so everybody all good yes sitting straight absolutely all set you know for the uh, study of the subject of audit how many of you loved audit at the intermediate level or during your article chip or audit was like a nightmare for you you know theory subject some are good with practical subject every person you know different personality different likes dislikes strengths and weaknesses and all of that so yeah things happen in different ways okay right uh, is english comfortable for all of you है ना ऐसा तो नहीं है जनरली दर इज एन इमेज क्रिएटेड दैट यू नो आरती मैम टीचर्स इन इंग्लिश बट या आई डू टीच इन इंग्लिश बट ऐसा नहीं है कि मैं हिंदी में नहीं बात कर सकती हूँ है ना तो मैं हिंदी में बात करके पूरा सब्जेक्ट हिंदी में भी पढ़ा सकती हूँ बट बिकॉज मेनी ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट्स यू नो वुड प्रेफर दी इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज दैट द रीजन एंड अल्टीमेटली यू नो यू गाइज हैव टू राइट योर एग्जाम्स इन इंग्लिश ना so why listen to something in hindi what you want to you know write in the exams in english unless and until you have opted only like for the hindi medium of the paper there is no question right so it's better you know that we study in english and anyways you know i am not going to speak any shakespeare or, or any shashi tharoor english i don't even know that type of english it's normal 
you know whatever normal grammar and normal terms are there related to the subject of audit you know that english is what we are going to speak right and english is like a essential requirement for you know you becoming a professional in the coming future in the next few months or in a probably in a year or so okay right all of you i expect you to have some stationery with you stationery in the context of one notebook to begin with 200 pages full scale and then maybe as that book gets over you can move on to the next book then a few color pens like red blue green you know any color orange pink yellow purple whatever you like then uh, one or two highlighters that is the neon color highlighters and some sticky notes you know so that if you find any uh, short form or any memory technique given over there you can write it on that sticky note and in your textbook wherever it is given there you can put that sticky note right so that your book comes to life you know you put uh, you sprinkle life into your book by doing such markings and all of that right then you have a textbook and you have a notebook right in the textbook the page numbers are already there in the notebook you will write down page number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then what you will do right say in the textbook on pay i'm just giving an example say in the textbook on page number 2.1 right there is a particular standard discussed particular topic discussed and that in your notebook is on page number 6 in the textbook it is on page number 2.1 and in your notebook you've written about it in page number 6 so in the notebook you will give a reference to the textbook refer tb 1 uh, 2.1 refer tb what is tb the textbook 2.1 and in the textbook you will give a reference to the notebook refer nb 6 right that is page number 6 i hope you understand what i said in the textbook you have to give a reference to the notebook and in the notebook you have to give a reference to the textbook page number right so that you know late late any point of time if you're reading only the textbook or you're reading only the notebook you want to do some additional reading you know which page in the textbook and the notebook you need to go to right i hope you understand my instructions very clearly and in the first uh, you know attempt in which i speak right no need to have many attempts no that everything i need to repeat it one attempt two attempt three attempt no one attempt i say it and you should follow it is it happening that way is it working that way right textbook you give the notebook reference and notebook you give the textbook reference these are like some ground rules you know which you need to follow when you study the subject of the audit okay right so with that now let's come to the discussion of the syllabus right so let's come to the discussion of the syllabus okay right so the name of our subject right you have the ca final advanced auditing right so intermediate what you started as the auditing and the code of ethics now in the new syllabus there is code of ethics introductory part also added at intermediate level right but ca final you have the advanced auditing comma the assurance and then the professional ethics right the ethics associated with the ca profession that is the moral values right the moral principles as a chartered accountant right so that's the advanced auditing assurance and the professional ethics okay right in our syllabus in total as per the institute study material we have the 19 chapters right as per the institute study material we have the 19 chapters in our books also right you know these are the books which might have reached to you or might be on the way right you have the right the module 2 uh, and the module 1 right you have the module 1 and then this is the module 2 right this module 1 and module 2 is also is is having those 11, what you say 19 chapters over there right so in the module 1 right in the module 1 you have the zero now what is chapter 0 that is something additional which i have put on my own right so chapter number 0 to 11 is in module 1 and chapter number 12 to 19 is in the module 2 right so chapter number 0 to 11 is in module 1 and chapter number 12 to 19 is in module 2 right chapter 0 it's like ma'am what is this chapter 0 over there it is just a quick revision of all the important terms that we have an audit 
right all the important terminology regarding the subject of audit just a quick revision of all of those terms and then after that is that it has a list of all these standards right so that is plain your chapter zero right then after that you have the chapter one to eleven but after one we have one addition over there that is the one a in which i have put some miscellaneous standards right so some additional standards which specifically are not included in your syllabus but they say you know that these are discussed at the intermediate level oh, but a case study based question can be asked at ca final level so they say not applicable but applicable okay, they are discussed at inter level and uh, case study based questions can be asked at ca final level and then after that the uh, chapter 7 i have divided under two parts 7a and the 7b Right, seven B is where we discuss one section one forty three, the rights and duties of the company auditor, and second the clauses of the CARO two thousand twenty. Right, CARO two thousand twenty. Right, so is this all there in your syllabus also? Yes, but just for clarity purpose, just for better understanding purpose, I have put it separately. Like zero is the chapter zero is the important terms. One A is the miscellaneous standards, and then the seven B is the section one forty three and the CARO. Right, so institute study material chapter seven has all of it put together. What I have done, seven A is the seven hundred series, and seven B is the section one forty three and the CARO. Right, and then in the module two, you have chapter number twelve to nineteen, in which chapter number fourteen I have made it as fourteen A and fourteen B. Right, you know because we have the audit of the banks and the audit of the NBFCs. Now putting the entire thing in one chapter was becoming too voluminous. That is why I just divided the chapter into fourteen A and fourteen B. Right, so these are only the places where you will find you know chapter zero, chapter one A, then chapter seven A, seven B, and then fourteen A, fourteen B. Rest it is entirely in line with the study material of the ICAR. Right, chapter number one to nineteen. Okay, now in this chapter number one to nineteen, chapter number one to eleven, and the zero is just your revision of important terms, and it is regarding the list of the standards. But apart from that, this chapter number one to eleven is regarding your engagement. Yes, everybody, please listen to me carefully. It is regarding your engagement and. quality control standards right it is regarding the eqcs what is eqcs engagement and quality control standards right so chapter number 1 to 11 what are we going to discuss in chapter number 1 to 11 the engagement and the quality control standards okay right how many engagement and quality control standards are there anybody any guess kitne hai कितने स्टैंडर्ड्स थे है ना वो जैसे कितने आदमी थे वैसे कितने स्टैंडर्ड्स थे राइट हाउ मेनी एंगेजमेंट एंड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल स्टैंडर्ड्स वी हैव हाउ मेनी डू वी हैव एनी बडी एनी वाइल्ड गेस राइट हाउ मेनी स्टैंडर्ड्स डू वी हैव ओके एस के सी वन इज वन ऑफ देम या दैट्स द क्वालिटी कंट्रोल स्टैंडर्ड ओके ग्रेट व्हाट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट राइट दैट्स द क्वालिटी कंट्रोल स्टैंडर्ड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट which are the other standards that we have over there right yeah so engagement and the quality control standards right so in total we have the 46 standards okay now in the old syllabus you know that means up to november 2023 it was the 36 standards which were applicable at ca final Right, thirty-six standards which were applicable at CA final. That means ten standards were not applicable. So total is how much? Forty-six. Out of that, in old syllabus up to November twenty-three. Please listen to me. Both ears wide open. Up to November twenty-three, how many standards used to be applicable? Thirty-six standards. But now what has happened? These additional ten standards are also added in your CA final syllabus. So that is why now you have the forty-six standards applicable. Okay, so these ten standards, which were not applicable for November twenty three, they were applicable till May two thousand nineteen. Up to May two thousand nineteen, institute in CA final, there were forty six standards which were applicable. 
देन समथिंग केम टू दियर माइंड एंड देन दे सेट नवंबर 19 टू है ना नवंबर 19 टू नवंबर 2020 Three. It was only the thirty-six standards which were applicable, and now May twenty-four onwards, what has happened again is that those ten standards which had gone on a holiday from November nineteen to November twenty-three have now come back. Okay, so as such, it is not new, totally new standards. It is standards which have already been tested by ICAI previously, and now they have again been reintroduced into the syllabus. Like if you see the question bank for these ten standards, you will see that there is some question which I have put over there of November seventeen, November eighteen, May nineteen or so. You might wonder that, अरे ये अभी applicable है ये question banks में reference कहाँ से आया? तो they were applicable till May nineteen. Right, so I was, you know, when these standards had gone, you know, I it was like a small heartbreak for me, because you know, once you study a standard, it becomes applicable for the exams. You study and you teach it a number of times. You gain mastery over that particular standard. And I used to really like, you know, I like the entire subject of audit as such. But these ten standards also, I used to like. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to miss teaching these uh, ten standards. And then you know, uh, when those standards came back. into the syllabus and then when i taught it again it was like a nostalgic feeling for me that oh yeah yeah this is all what i used to teach oh these were the examples you know it was like memories coming back to me of all these uh, standards over there right so how many standards do you have which are applicable you have the 46 standards okay like earlier in ca final audit paper the weightage of these standards used to be 25 to 30 marks up to november 2020 three the weightage of the standards was told by icai to be right how much 25 to 30 marks like 20 on the lower side and 30 on the higher side so 25 to 30 on an average now in the new syllabus they say standards ka weightage is at least 50% in the new syllabus they say standards you know the engagement and quality control standards how much is the weightage now the weightage is 50% that is 50 marks of your exams are going to be coming from the standards how much of that in the mcq theory part that we will see but 50 marks like so damn important area for your exams is the standards okay so in your life so far what you've seen is the you say ma'am don't ask what all we have seen in life right okay so we've seen uh, accounting standards then we've also heard about the international financial reporting standards then we've also heard about the end accounting standards but now we are going to hear about the right engagement and quality control standards i'll be discussing in detail with you okay what comes under this uh, engagement and quality control standards but let me tell you let me tell you that are you listening to here i am on your screen you don't go anywhere now okay right so now what i am telling you apart from this eqcs they've also made a reference to s i a they've also made a reference to f a i s they've also made a reference to s a s oh my god that seems something interesting over there right so they have made a reference to the standards on internal audit right standards on internal audit then they've also made a reference to the forensic accounting and investigation standards right so you have the icai is the first one to issue the forensic accounting and investigation standards and then apart from that you also have the social audit standards right now you nowadays you also have the social stock exchange right so you have the social audit standards right so these are like you know just the introductory part just the numbers and the the title and the number of that standards have been introduced in your syllabus right standards on internal audit forensic accounting and investigation standards and the sas that is the social audit standards okay right so now coming back to this term on the engagement everybody are you all with me yes everyone please tell me are you all there yes no technology issues full data loaded 
right in your mobile in your laptop in your tablet whatever you know technology you have with you right full data no power interruption no fluctuation no problem hai na problem nahi hai na no problem at all okay right so engagement and quality control standards okay now as a chartered accountant right as a chartered accountant they also call him as a professional accountant okay as a professional accountant what are the types of engagements that you can perform it says okay as a chartered accountant you can perform an audit engagement audit mean bread and butter you remember those fine days of inter audit where you in your first class you would have been taught the definition of audit can i hear the definition of audit you remember those golden days of your life yes audit is an independent examination of financial information of any entity whether profit oriented or not irrespective of its size or legal form when such an examination is conducted with a view to expressing an opinion thereon you remember something right audit right audit is an independent examination and then we talk about the advantages of an independent audit and the inherent limitations of an audit and all of that okay right so one type of engagement which a ca can do is the audit engagement then apart from audit it says ca you can do the review engagement right you can do a review engagement right so like an audit and review are performed on the historical financial information right they are performed on the historical financial information that is why they are called called as the post mortem activity post mortem ke already ho gaya now you are digging the grave and finding out you understand it's a post mortem activity it is performed on the historical financial information say example say example today is 15th april 2025 example hai na today is what date 15th april 2025 so what will be the year which is already over 31st march 2025 so 31st march 2025 for 15th april 2025 is the historical financial information hai na history and the historical financial information now this historical financial information as the ca what you can do you can either do the audit or you can do the review right historical and now what is financial information it is financial statements what is financial statements it is balance sheet statement of profit and loss then cash flow statement then you know this fellow soce yes statement of changes in equity if applicable and notes that is summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory information right that is what you mean by financial statements balance sheet profit and loss cash flow soce that is statement of changes in equity if applicable and then the notes that is the summary of the significant accounting policies and the other explanatory information right so as a ca when you are doing the checking of the historical financial statements or the historical financial information you can do the checking either by way of an audit or you can do a review if you do an audit please listen to me if you do an audit then you can give a reasonable assurance how is reasonable assurance defined as it is a high level of assurance but not an absolute assurance due to the inherent limitations of an audit right so reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement that they give a true and fair view whereas if the ca does a review then he gives a limited assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement right so there is a difference in the level of assurance which we give in a audit and a review okay so don't see ek review kya hota hai you know what is one review ke work is done by article article ka work is being checked by the team senior then senior ka work is being checked by the manager then manager ka work is being checked by the engagement partner or by the sole proprietor even this is a review 
then icai sends a chartered accountant to your firm to check the quality of your work that is peer review and no, that is peer review then pick four like say pwc hyderabad will send us uh, what do you say one employee of pwc hyderabad to pwc bangalore or you know pwc china to pwc india right to check the quality of their services so that is called as the practice review right that is called as the practice review so these reviews are different this a uh, work of a less experienced team member being checked by more experienced team member peer review of icai practice review done amongst the ca firm it says these reviews are different here we are talking about review as a method of doing the examination checking of the financial statements right so please everyone start writing down with me what is the difference between an audit and a review right in an audit the auditor gives a reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement whereas in a review the ca the practitioner gives a limited assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement right reasonable assurance is given in the form of a positive assurance what do we say okay financial statements give a true and fair view it's a positive statement and they give a true and fair view whereas in case of a review where we have to give a limited assurance we give a negative assurance so now how do you draft your opinion you say nothing has come to our attention nothing has i am the so ca and i have done the review and i am saying nothing has come to our attention that causes us to believe that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view nothing has come to our attention that causes us to believe that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view means what minus minus plus nothing not that means they give a true and fair view but limited assurance is to be given in the form of a negative assurance and reasonable assurance is to be given in the form of the positive assurance right this is what has been told by the standards right so what do you think what is broader in scope audit or review yes intelligent students quickly answer my question what do you think is broader in scope audit or review obviously obviously yes obviously yes audit will be more in scope as compared to a review and review will be less in scope as compared to an audit right in an audit mainly we have the seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence let me see if anybody's a, a brain file is opening when i talk about the seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence i am doing an audit i have to obtain audit evidence what is evidence information it's not proof it's information obtained by the auditor on which he bases his conclusion as an auditor how i can obtain this information this evidence what are the seven methods of obtaining the evidence any student yes seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence i c a i o r r exactly what is that inspection right then confirmation right then analytical procedures very good analytical procedures then inquiry then observation then recalculation and last one is the re performance right so when you are doing an audit what are the methods that you can use i c a i o r r like you know when i am checking the minutes of the meeting or i am checking a sales voucher i am doing inspection when i obtain a confirmation from debtor creditor banker that is confirmation when i compare with previous year figures that is analytical procedure when i have a discussion with the employees that is inquiry when i observe the counting of inventory being done by the client personnel client is counting inventory they are inventory what i am doing i am observing i am taking a look at a process being performed by others that is observation i check the calculation of depreciation rent royalty interest so what am i doing recalculation 
and client has already counted the inventory some of their inventory i'm counting it again that is reperformance client has already prepared brs i am preparing the brs again bank reconciliation statement client has already prepared i'm preparing it again so what am i doing reperformance Right. So, in an audit, mainly there are the seven methods of obtaining audit evidence which are given in SA 500. What is the title of SA 500? Audit evidence. And these are the seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence. Okay. Whereas, in a review, there are mainly two methods which are used. What are the two methods used in case of a review? Inquiry and analytical procedures. That's it. Right. In case of the Review, because we said now review is less in scope. Audit is more in scope as compared to a review. So in the review, we are giving only limited assurance. We are not giving the reasonable assurance, right? So here it says only mainly the procedures performed are inquiry and analytical procedures, right? Inquiry and analytical procedures. Okay. Now to do an audit, to do an audit icai has issued these standards on auditing right standards on auditing and to do a review icai has issued these standards on review engagement right these standards on review engagement right how many standards on auditing are there right how many standards on auditing Yes, we have the 38 standards on auditing. And how many standards on review engagement? Just two. And just two standards on review engagement, wherein you have the SRE 2400 because it's in the 2000 series and SRE 2410. Right? So that is the first two types of the engagement standards, right? The SA and the SRE. When you are doing an audit, you need to follow the standards on auditing. When you are doing a review, you need to follow the standards on review engagement. Is it clear to all of you? You follow what I say? Right? SRE is discussed in your 2400 and 2410 is discussed in your chapter number 10. Right? It was 2400 and 2410 is discussed. I told you module 1, we have chapter 1 to 11. So, it's discussed in the chapter number 10. Clear everyone? Did you get a rough idea of what is an audit, what is a review? Right? Audit, review, both are postmortem. Both are performed on the historical financial information. In an audit, we give a reasonable assurance. Reasonable assurance standards say that you always have to give it in the form of a positive assurance whereas in a review we give a limited assurance and limited assurance is always to be given in the form of a negative assurance in an audit we have the seven methods of obtaining audit evidence i c a i o r r inspection confirmation that is external confirmations analytical procedures inquiry observation recalculation reperformance whereas in a review mainly the procedures performed are the inquiry and analytical procedures sometimes you may follow the other methods but mainly it is inquiry and analytical procedures okay right so let's come back to the chart which i was preparing over here right okay audit and review as a ca what are the types of of engagement that you can perform is the audit engagement or the review engagement both are done for the historical financial information if you are doing an audit you need to follow the SA that is the standards on auditing if you are doing a review you need to follow the SRE that is the standards on the review engagement okay right so there are 38 standards on auditing and then there are the Right, two standards on the review engagement. Then a CA can be appointed. And a CA can be appointed to do audit. Okay. CA can be appointed to do review. Both are for historical financial information. CA can be appointed for an assurance engagement other than audit or review. And a CA can be appointed for an assurance engagement that is say for you know if it is 31st march 2025 then we said it is historical financial information because we said today is 15th april 25 but say if it is you know 31st march 2035 
for 2035 is future so what is this this is not historical this is future prospective financial information and now for prospective financial information if you have to do the checking and give an assurance then that is the other assurance right other assurance right so other assurance what do we have whenever ca is appointed for the other assurance he needs to follow the sae what does sae stand for the standards on assurance engagement right the standards on the assurance engagement how many standards are there on the assurance engagement three right you have the sae 3400 3402 and 3420 when we go to them we will see that right for sre we have 2400 and 2410 SAE 3400, 3402 and 3420. Right. Now this audit review other assurance. These are all assurance services. Audit you give reasonable assurance. Review you give the limited assurance. Other assurance again it is limited or moderate assurance. But if you are providing a service other than assurance services. Then that is called as your related services. Right? So now it is other than assurance. Isme, whatever it is, ultimately it is an assurance engagement. Audit review or other assurance engagement. But now you are not doing audit. You are not doing review. It is not any other assurance engagement. But it is a related services engagement. Then it says CA you need to follow the SRS. What is SRS? The standards on related services. Right? The standards on related services right that is srs how many srs are issued to srs right so you have srs 4400 and 4410 right 4400 and 4410 right so what did we see s a s r e s a e then s r s these are the four types of engagement standards. Standards on auditing, standards on review engagement, standards on assurance engagement and the standards on related services. So as a CA, hey everyone, are you listening to me? As a CA, as a chartered accountant, as a professional accountant, what are the types of engagement that I can perform? I'm not able to hear you. Oh, you'll say, ma'am, no, we are mute. No, no, don't worry. Be mute only. But if you say, I can hear you. If you say it, no, I will be able to hear you. Right? As a CA, what are the types of engagement that you can perform? Audit, review, any other assurance engagement other than audit or review. That is SAE. And then the standards on related services. Right? You can perform the related services engagement. Super. Super, very good. Okay, now whatever be the type of engagement that you are performing, that you say, oh, you know, I am doing an audit. Oh, you know, I am doing a review. Oh, you know, I am doing an assurance engagement other than audit or review. Oh, you know, nowadays I am very busy providing the related services. Whatever be the type of engagement that you are performing, you always, always, always have to maintain the quality of your audit. And you always have to maintain the quality, right? So we have a quality control standard, which is SQC. And how many SQCs are there? Only one. And a one standard on quality control. Or uska number bhi kya hai? SQC 1. What is the number also? SQC 1. Okay. Right. So let's do some mathematics. 38. 38 standards on auditing. Plus 2 standards on review engagement. 40. 40 plus 3 standards on assurance engagement. 43. Then 2 standards on related services. So 43 plus 2. 44, 45 and then one standard on quality control. Exactly. So these are the 46 standards which are applicable for your CA final audit which is your chapter number 1 to 11. Right. So earlier what used to happen, there used to be, I told you, you know, up to number 23, you had 35 essays and one standard on quality control. So there used to be 36 standards which were applicable. 
but now what they have done the three standards which were not applicable of the 800 series then the sre sae srs right so two three two and these three right even these have been made applicable right so these are the additional 10 are you saying three plus two three plus two ten standards which have now been made applicable right which have now been made applicable right so this is the breakup of the 46 standards which are applicable for your exams okay right so once again let me mention the term over here engagement and quality control right standards and what are the eqcs you have the right asa sre sae s r s and then you have the s q c right s q c how many s a 38 right standards on review engagement 2 3 2 1 right out of this you know the uh, s a 800 805 and 810 is discussed in chapter number 8 specialized areas so chapter number uh, 0 to or what you say 0 to 7 has all the other 35 standards or even the sqc one is over there right so chapter number 0 to 7 but chapter number 8 is regarding the 800 series then chapter number 9 is regarding the standards on related services chapter number 10 is regarding the review engagement and chapter number 11 is regarding the assurance engagement and then sqc1 is discussed again in chapter number one where the name of chapter number one itself is the quality control right the name of chapter number one itself is quality control so did everybody understand chapter number 8 9 10 11 right chapter number 8 chapter number 9 chapter number 10 and chapter number 11 what is there in this? Here you have the 800 series. Your US SA 800 series. That is you have the 800, 805 and the 810. Then here you have the SRS 4400 and 4410. Then the SRE 2400 and 2410. And then you have the SAE 3400. 3402 and 3420 okay right and the 3420 okay right 3420 so did you get an outline of chapter number 8 9 10 11 everyone yes everyone please tell me did you get an outline right so you have the three standards 2 2 and 3 right so these 10 standards are discussed over here in chapter number 8 9 10 11 clear all of you yes is it clear right chapter number 8 9 10 11 okay right then apart from that in chapter number 0 to 7 we have the discussion of the other 36 standards right so 10 are discussed over here and then chapter number 0 to 7 we have the discussion of the 36 standards right as i told you chapter number 0 is my own creation and it's not there in the study material but it's just a quick reference of all the important terms and so Right, then you have the chapter number one in which is the quality control, right? What is the name of chapter number one? It is quality control in which we discuss two standards, SQC1 and SA220. And now SQC, I just told you quality control for firms. And now SQC1 and then SA220 which is quality control for an audit. Right, so that is chapter number one. Then after one, again my own creation, I've put the chapter number one A over there. Right, in one A we have SA two hundred. I hope you remember SA two hundred. Kind of overall objectives of the independent auditor. Kuch yaad aa hai? Do you remember something like that? Which you know? We are overall objectives of the independent auditor and then the conduct of an audit in accordance with the standards on auditing. Exactly. Right. So, SA 200, 210, agreeing the terms of audit engagement, 230, audit documentation. Right. Then you have these three best friends, 315, 330 and the 450. Right. Risk response and the reporting. I'll be elaborating more upon that. 
right? So you have the 315, 330 and the 450 and then the 320, right? That is the materiality standard, right? So that's chapter number 0, chapter number 1. Then there is chapter number 2. Right, what is chapter number 2 ka title? It is General Auditing Principles. General Auditing Principles and the Auditor's Responsibilities. I hope everybody is with me. Right, no time for distraction. So busy with the pace of the class. Right, so general auditing principles and the auditor's responsibilities. In this chapter, they have incorporated the discussion on SA 240, 250, 260 and then the SA 299 and 402. Right, how they have clubbed it that they only know. But that is how they have included, you know, in chapter number two, you will find the discussion of 240, 250, 260, 299 and 402. In case if you've forgotten what are these standards about, don't worry. We'll discuss it, right? Now I'm just giving you an outline. And we somewhere we need to start, right? Right. So that is chapter number two. Then you have the chapter number three, which is regarding the audit planning. Very good, right? Audit planning, the strategy and the execution. Right. So audit planning, strategy and execution, in which again they incorporated SE 300, 600, 610, 620 and 540, right? So these are the chapter uh, standards. So it's not only these standards are there, there is some other theoretical discussion also plus the standards which are discussed in chapter number 3. And so chapter number 2, then chapter number 3 in which we discuss SE 300, 600, 610, 620 and the 540. Then you have the chapter number 4 wherein the name of the chapter is the risk assessment and internal control. Right, risk assessment and internal control in which they've incorporated the discussion, sorry, on SE 265. Right, so there is a discussion on the entire risk-based audit approach, internal controls, a huge discussion on internal control and then also SA-265, right, SA-265. Then chapter number 5 is regarding the audit evidence, right, chapter number 5 is regarding the audit evidence in which we discuss SA-500, 501, 505, 510, 520, 530, 540 already discussed. So we have 550. And 540 to already ho gaya na chapter number 3 mein. And 540 is already done. So you are after 530, you have the 550. Right? Which is the related parties. We'll see that. That is chapter number 5. Then chapter number 6, which is completion and review. Right? So sorry. Right? Chapter number 6, which is regarding the completion and review in which again you have the discussion of three standards SA 560, 570 and 580. Right, so 60, 70, 80, three standards over there and then after that you have the chapter number 7. I told you 7, I have made it 7A and 7B. Right, 7A you have the SA 700, 701, 705, 706, 710, 720. And this 7B is section 143 and the Karo 2020. Okay, right. So that's your chapter number 7. And then 8, 9, 10, 11. So I've already told you. Ye na? 8, 9, 10, 11. You remember? 8, 9, 10, 11, I have already told you. And right now what I told you is chapter number 0 to 7. So I have told you the outline of chapter number 0 to 11. Is it clear? Right? So how many standards are over here? Right? You have the, yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right? Then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right, 20, then 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Correct. Ye 36 ho gaya. Or wo 8, 9, 10, 11 mein 10 ho gaya. To ho gaya 46. Tally. 
है ना दिस एट नाइन टेन इलेवन में वी हैव दी टेन स्टैंडर्ड एंड देर इट वॉज दी थर्टी सिक्स स्टैंडर्ड सो लाइक वाइज वी कंप्लीट दी एंटायर योर फोर्टी सिक्स स्टैंडर्ड getting little little it's unfamiliar yeah i know that that's why we have to begin somewhere no to make it familiar for all of you right so everyone did you understand chapter number 0 to 11 please understand ke it is regarding the standards that's max minimum of what you need to know so if you look at the study material of the icai right it says the as before we begin and all of that and then each chapter i'll tell you how it is divided and then these are the chapters which i just told you and the quality control chapter number 1 general auditing principles and auditors responsibility chapter number 2 audit planning strategy execution chapter number right three in which they have discussed this 450 520 is coming at two three places right then the 540 600 610 620 right then materiality risk assessment and internal control right then audit evidence then completion and review then the reporting right after in the reporting itself they discuss the caro though it is not mentioned over here right then the 8 9 10 11 which is 800 series srs series sre series and then the saa right sae right so that is your chapter number 1 to 11 right that is your chapter number 1 to 11 right so 8 9 10 11 is these the 10 standards which have you know reincarnated or they've come again and that is chapter number 8 9 10 11 and these are your chapter number 0 to 7 Right, chapter number zero to seven. Okay, right. So I hope all of you have understood that one part of your study in CA final audit is regarding the standards. How many standards we have? Forty six standards we have. And what is the weightage of these standards? Minimum fifty marks. Itna samjha? Have you understood this much? The forty-six standards are there, and the weightage that is chapter number zero to eleven, and the weightage of this is fifty marks. Right, that much is entered into your mind. This much information has it entered your mind? Okay, great. Now let's come to the module two, which is your chapter number twelve to nineteen. Right, chapter number twelve to nineteen. In that, I will make two parts: twelve to eighteen, and then chapter number nineteen. Chapter number nineteen is one dedicated chapter on the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditors. Right, the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor. Right, if you create a company, if you create a company. then you are governed by the provisions of the yes companies act 2013 if you create an llp then you are governed by the llp act if you create a cooperative society then you are regulated by the cooperative society act now you become a chartered accountant so now you will be regulated by the ca act 1949 Right, the CA Act 1949. This CA does not stand for Companies Act. This CA stands for the Chartered Accountants Act. The right? CA Act. And what is always there in a Act? You know, in a Act you have the sections. Right? We just as Company Law has sections. Even the CA Law has the sections. Then just as Company Law has the schedule. Do you know where in Company Law the uh, format of balance sheet P and L is given? कंपनी लॉ विच शेड्यूल बैलेंस शीट पी एन एल का फॉर्मेट इज गिवेन इन येस एग्जैक्टली शेड्यूल थ्री राइट टू दी कंपनीज एक्ट सो सिमिलरली वी हैव दी शेड्यूल टू दी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट एक्ट दी फर्स्ट शेड्यूल एंड दी सेकेंड शेड्यूल टू दी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट एक्ट एंड यूर वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो के वॉट इज अलाउड एज अ सी ए एंड वॉट इज नॉट अलाउड एज अ सी ए एंड वॉट इज नॉट अलाउड इफ दैट इज डन बाई द सी ए देन वी से सी ए गिल थी guilty of professional misconduct and a guilty this is not right this is not allowed and okay ca charges this fees on percentage basis it says in in some cases allowed but by default not allowed ca accepts an audit without taking an noc from previous auditor no objection certificate from previous auditor it says out 
and out you are guilty of professional misconduct right so one part of our discussion is going to be regarding the ethics and the liabilities of the auditor so far it has been seen that you know approximately three questions like on an average rather than approximately you know on an average three questions you know mcq theory all put together come from ethics in the exams right so even if three questions come of you know four marks each the weightage of ethics on an average is 12 marks on the what do you say lower side let me take it as 10 marks right so standards ka weightage is how much 50 marks ethics ka weightage is how much 10 marks so this itself covers 60 marks of your paper standards 50 marks ethics 10 marks like minimum 10 marks so ethics they will ask they should ask you understand no you otherwise you go to the exam you say ma'am only four marks ethics have come so both though you know it is icai and uh, the only thing which is uh, predictable about icai is that it is unpredictable and uh, just as the world cup like you know we thought that oh our crowd is cheering and it's uh, the venue is india and all of that but it's unpredictable you know it's a game right so just it's a lesson to be learned from that so similarly you always have to be ready for the unknown and a ca final you know the level of preparation or uh, the level of confidence which you should be having should be such okay what question you've studied that comes in the exam obviously you should be able to write the answer but what question you have not studied that also you are able to write the answer and the examiner doesn't come to know that you didn't know about this but still you've written the answer and he thinks that you know about it like sometimes you are having fever you know but still you go to office you do the work and you don't tell anybody you don't show it on your face that you have the fever then later on they come to know oh then after two days your condition you know deteriorated further and then you didn't come to office so then everybody comes to know that past two days you had fever but you never showed it on your face and so who knows only you know what you know what you don't know no need to tell it to the examiner okay see i don't know no Try to show him as if I know everything or not. Be that confident. Be that skillful. You know, it's not an exam paper where you know, uh, like an 8th standard, 9th standard, 10th standard. You studied some Chetna self-study. You studied some Navneet guide and then lot of CBSE textbook and workbook and papers. And out of that, the questions came in the exam and you wrote the answers. No. You, if you set those type of expectations, you know, your expectations itself are wrong. So you are bound to face disappointment because why your expectations are not realistic. You understand you say ma'am please tell us the important questions. Okay so I will tell you some 50 questions. But now boss it's the theory of probability that whatever 50 questions I tell you out of that some 20 come in the exam. Can they come? Yes. Can they not come? Very much yes. You understand, no, please don't have the expectation only. Okay, you tell me the questions which are going to come. Tell me the important chapters. Tell me what I should certainly study for the exam. These expectations are only wrong. So obviously, if your expectations are wrong, your preparations will go wrong. Keep the right expectations. Right, from day one. Ensure that, you know, it's always said that your first attempt is your golden attempt. Right? So whatever goes in the preparation, the zeal, the enthusiasm for the first attempt, that never comes in any further attempt. Though we, let's not talk about it in the day one of the class. But yeah, let's keep this in mind. Okay, my first attempt is the golden attempt. Right? So I know that I am preparing for a competitive exam. Right? Like if you see the uh, statistics of the ICAI, right? they give the members and students statistics over there. Right? Do you know the population of our country? How many of you know the population of our country? You don't know? Yes, 1.4 billion, exactly. And out of 1.4 billion, how many chartered accountants are there? 4 lakh. Like, I think there is no minority as much as that of, a, you know, CA as compared to any other community or whatever. We are the biggest minority of our country. And like just a few lakh of chartered accountants in a population of like 140 crore. 
with just a few lakh over there okay and then they've given the details of the fellows and the associate we'll be seeing all of that and then they also have given the student statistics right so how many students are uh, there with icai right so uh eight lakh students over there right and at ca final how many one lakh 89 foundation right two lakh and then at the intermediate there are so many students with the icai right so there is a lot of uh, funneling which happens in the ca course like you know foundation then enter then final then finally who becomes the ca that's like you know the uh the you know the final filter over there okay anyways right so let's uh, talk about this chapter number 19 which is professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor right which is the chartered accountants act sections and schedule where the quotage in the exam is laid, like say on an average 10 marks okay right now coming to chapter number 12 to 18 now coming to chapter number 12 to 18 in which we are going to talk about all different 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 types of audit right what are these different different audits that we are going to talk about one we are going to talk about the digital audit and the digital auditing and assurance that is your chapter number 12 digital auditing and the assurance that is your chapter number 12 like digital auditing like an old syllabus there used to be a chapter called as special aspects of auditing in an automated environment Ab gaya zamana. automated environment ka. now they are talking one step further digital auditing in which they are talking about artificial intelligence blockchain then remote remote audit virtual audit rpa robotic process automation Right? So that is cyber attack, cyber risk, right? What are the different types of cyber attack, right? So that's a brand new chapter introduced in your syllabus, which is digital auditing and assurance. Every exam expects at least one question from this particular chapter, right? Brand new chapter. So five marks. Sometimes they could either ask two questions also, right? So four to eight marks, five to eight marks is the weightage of this chapter. Then you have the next audit over there, which is the group audit right which is the group audit old syllabus the same chapter was there but only the name was audit of consolidated financial statements and the parent company subsidiary associate joint venture all of them put together conso you know group and a consolidated financial statements so that same chapter of audit of consolidated financial statements has now become the group audit so it's like the old wine new bottle and it's just the new name given to the chapter over there which is the group audit right then chapter number 14 as i told you i have divided it in under 14a and 14b which is your audit of banks and the audit of the nbfcs right so non-banking financial companies right so audit of banks again every exam we see one question and nbfcs is like a oh in the old syllabus it used to be like a visiting chapter okay some exam question comes some exam doesn't come like that but generally bank audit every exam we see your question group audit also generally one question okay right then chapter number 15 is again an audit of the psus what is psu public sector undertaking and enter you had something called as government audit so this is the higher version of the government audit wherein they say the overview of the audit of the public sector undertakings right the overview of the audit of the public sector undertakings right then you have the chapter number 16 which is regarding the internal audit right internal audit earlier this chapter used to be internal audit comma in the old syllabus it used to be internal audit comma management and operational audit abhi management and operational audit rest in peace and no longer there management audit operational audit so the only audit which remains over there is the internal audit right so you have the internal audit okay right then chapter number 17 which is your due diligence investigations and the forensic accounting right so due three mini three chapters put together in one due diligence investigation and the forensic accounting earlier it used to be called as forensic auditing but now everywhere the word audit has been replaced with accounting so we call it as forensic accounting but here to audit and a forensic audit 
बट टेक्निकली दे से यू हैव टू कॉल इट एज फॉरेंसिक अकाउंटिंग ठीक है है ना सो ड्यू डिलीजेंस इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड दी फॉरेंसिक अकाउंटिंग राइट सो ड्यू डिलीजेंस सेम एज इट वॉज इन योर ओल्ड सिलेबस इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑल्सो सेम फॉरेंसिक अकाउंटिंग लिटिल बिट ऑफ अपडेशन इन दी कंटेंट right so that's the forensic accounting then you have chapter number 18 which is your esg and sdg can anybody guess what is esg and sdg assurance over your right esg nowadays there is a buzz about these two terms yes it is the no no clue yes exactly e is for the environment then s is for the social and g is the yes environment social and governance correct right so esg and what is sdg sdg kya hai nobody no one knows about sdg it is the sustainable development goal right that you have you develop but it should be sustainable right you cannot pollute the water you cannot pollute the air and then develop no you should have a sustainable development goal that you achieve your targets by keeping in mind the needs of the future generation right so there are these 17 sustainable development goals which have been given then they talk about these six types of capitals and the nine principles of the brsr that is the business responsibility and the sustainability reporting right so that's again a brand new chapter over there which is the esg environment social governance and the sdg that is the sustainable development goals short right so that's what i told you in um, chapter number 16 we have a brief reference to the standards on internal audit here we have a reference to the fais forensic accounting and investigation standards and here we have a reference to the sas that is the social audit standard and right? social audit standards okay right so two chapters brand new which are the brand new two chapters over there chapter number 12 and chapter number 18 what is chapter number 12 it is regarding your digital auditing and what is chapter number 18 esg and the sdg assurance then chapter number 8 9 10 11 11 reentry hai na they were there earlier up to may 19 then not there then again come back into the syllabus right chapter number 8 9 10 11 right then chapter number 0 to 7 is your 36 standards and then i told you the chapter number 13 to 17 right all those are your different different types of audits and then chapter number 19 which is professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditors right so this is what i wanted you know a sign of a good student is a student who knows what are the chapters in the syllabus some students they say acha sdg hai oh i never saw that oh i don't know <laughs> so uh, those type of great students are also there right so all of you have you got an idea right so if you look at the study material it says digital auditing and assurance chapter number 12 group audits chapter number 13 then 14 the special features of audit of banks and nbfcs i told you 14 a and b then 15 is public sector undertaking 16 is internal audit 17 due diligence investigation and the forensic accounting then emerging areas sdg and esg assurance right so sustainable development goals and the environment social and the governance assurance and then you have the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditors right the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditors so if you look at the institute study material they have issued three modules in module 1 they have chapter number 1 to 7 in module 2 they have chapter number 8 to 14 and chapter module 3 they have chapter number 15 to 19 but in our study material the books which have been issued to you there there is chapter number 0 to 19 so module 1 has 0 to 11 and module 2 has 12 to 19 right 12 to 19 okay right now what icai has done under each chapter after each chapter they have put three types of questions right so after each chapter icai has put three types of questions one is they put an integrated case scenario one they have put an integrated 
case scenario and ask some MCQs based on that case scenario. Second, they have some what I call it as the thank you questions, right? What is this thank you questions? It is your test your understanding question. So they've given a case scenario. They've given us a real life situation and they've told you to apply the concepts which you study in the chapter, right? So this is like the real new thing which is there in your questions. And it test your understanding. A practical application of the question is asked over there. And then third one is the TYK. What is TYK? It is the test your knowledge, which is your pure theoretical questions, you know. Okay, what is the meaning of blockchain? So whatever theory is there in the chapter that you write, or what are the different types of cyber attacks? So you write down these are the following are the different types. Right? So these are your theoretical and case study questions. But these are like the practical, you know, application-based question. That is your test, your understanding. And then you have the integrated case scenario. Right? So three types of question given almost at the end of each chapter. You have the MCQs, you have your test, your understanding, and then you have your test, your knowledge question. What I have done in this book is that whatever right questions are there in the study material of the ICAI in the new syllabus all those questions I have put and so far whatever historical database was there in the old study material in the mock test paper in the revision test paper in the suggested of ICAI in the earlier study material of ICAI all of that also I have incorporated in this particular book I have incorporated it in this particular book. Okay, so there are three ways in which you can study from this book. Right, so the module 1 and the module 2 which has been given to you. Right, there are three ways in which you can study from this book. Right, one, you can do a holistic study. Like, like a hundred, you know, a comprehensive, uh, you know, study. Like the entire theory, then the entire... Uh, what do you say? Question and answers regarding that. So it's like, you know, uh, the Bible, the Gita, the Quran, you know, it's like the Granth Sahib. It's like the, you know, the end, the full thing of the audit subject which you need to study. Second, if you only look at the question answer part, if you only look at the integrated case scenario, the thank you and the, you know, test your knowledge question, then this book will work for you as a scanner. You know, you don't look into any of the content of the chapter. What you only look into is you directly don't look into the theory part of the chapter. And directly what you do, you directly jump to the question bank. And you just see the, you know, like your, they have your test, your understanding. I don't know whether you're able to see. Then the integrated case scenario and then the test your knowledge. That's it. So if you see only that part of the book, then obviously the book works like a scanner for you right regarding all the questions okay and third you know whatever important terms are there or whatever i told you okay you will be preparing notes and charts as you go across the class right or whatever in the books you know like uh, this is the module one. Oh, oh, oh yeah right so this is the module one and in this uh, module one i've already this index and all i've discussed with you but if I want to show you something relevant over here, right, let's see in this module one over here, I, uh, you see that I have used the red color at few of the places, right? So if I want to revise only like the key terms or just have an overview of the entire chapter or use the book as a, you know, a express note or as a compiler or as a, you know, a summary notes or something, then what I do, I only read the heading on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I only only read the red red words and I only read the red red color words over there so that it becomes a quick revision no need to read the entire sentence normally when you study you will read the entire sentence but when you're revising re-revising 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 that time you may only read the keywords over there so then the book works as a summary book for you right so no need to like you know uh, what you say uh, you know, make it convenient or luxurious for yourself first by referring to a book which is only of 200 pages or only referring to a scanner and then realizing, oh my God, like, you know, I got like uh, what you got uh, 143 out of 150 in your group one. So it's not that you are not good. It's not that you are not, um, 
you know a uh, study or it's not that you are not capable but just a little bit here and there in any of the subject and you have to pay the cost of it you understand no it's a big cost no just for seven marks see like if you get 20 20 20 and then you get 60 out of 150 you know you have nicely failed you know, like this is this is good this is like proper authentic failure and then this is like failure which is deserving like you deserve to fail you've got 20 out of 100 you know you have like no face to show it's like clear that you need to study again okay but when does the torture of the ca course happen on you when you get a 58 in a subject you get a 39 in another subject and you get a 57 in another subject and now you have to write the group again now, because you got 58, 57, you don't get the exemption also. And this one subject, you got 39. And now that to see, if I get 20 and I have to study the subject again, the pain is less. So that doesn't mean that, okay, if you have to fail, fail nicely. Don't fail only. I know, but getting 58 and studying the subject again, that is the real, you know, uh, challenge in the CA course. That is what really pinches you. It hurts you very badly. So that 58 came, but now not sure whether that 58 will come again. Maybe that attempt, you know, whatever questions they asked and you, whatever you studied, it just was your everything in your favor and you got the 58. I know. So no, right? identify. Okay, you're saying, why I'm putting so much extra effort? Why I'm referring so many questions? I know generally these are the questions which come. Please understand, you're working for those additional 10 marks in your exams. So those additional 10 marks no, to jump from 140 to 150 or from 130 to 150 or from non-CA to CA, this is where you are really crushed. And this is where you are really tested. Because maximum of these students, they are just, you know, just near the finishing line. Just because of 5-7 marks, 8 marks, they are not able to cross the finishing line. There are many who are left behind. Unka to chodi do. Those 20 mark fellow, those to let them be there only. But these ones who are at the borderline and just because of a little bit of the lack of the effort, they couldn't pass the finishing line. So be careful for that. Don't take it for granted. Don't look out for a shortcut. Let that be your approach. Success will be yours. Don't have a, you know, a, a what you say, a over smart approach. Be conservative and you know, concept of prudence. All anticipated expense and losses to be provided for and incomes and gains should be ignored. You know I am studying extra, no problem. You will never regret studying extra. You know on the day of result when you see this, you know, 150, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 and you see 300 out of 600. You will not regret, you will not say, hey, why did I study so much? No need, I could have not studied. No, what you will think, whatever I studied, khatam ho gaya. It's over. You say, ma'am, what if I get 500 out of 600? Very, 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 very good. Too good. Too, 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 too good. No problem. You say, ma'am, what if I get 550? Very, 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 very good. All India rank one. Super, super, super good. The more, the merrier. No problem with getting anything more. If I get 60 plus in all subjects, wow, that is higher, on the higher side. But what is this EOQ? Hai. Does anybody know EOQ? Do you guys know EOQ? You don't know? Mm. You know EOQ? Haan, economic order quantity, correct, minimum order quantity. Ye apna minimum order quantity hai, hai na, 300. Phir zyada aagya to, aane do, aane do, barasne do. Okay, right, so that's how you need to prepare. Okay, be very disciplined in the class. Unless and until I am uh, giving an off, you are not supposed to take any off in the class. Right? No taking any holiday, no having any other priorities, not opting for the luxury ke, oh, I have a backup, oh, no problem, today I can't attend, so tomorrow. Karna hi nahi hai. And a little bit be like, you know, like military. 
है ना थोड़ा अभी फाइव सिक्स मंथ्स जब तक और वन ईयर टिल द टाइम सी ए फाइनल ना की लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ मिलिट्री टाइप ऑफ यू नो डिसिप्लिन एटीट्यूड इन योर लाइफ है ना बी लिटिल पर्टिकुलर डोंट बी कैजुअल देन रेस्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी कैजुअल डू वट एवर यू वॉन्ट and do whatever anyways then you know once you become a chartered accountant then uh, half of the problems of your uh, half what majority of the problems of your life will be solved financial independence is for there for sure recognition respect in the society is there for sure hai na to abhi thoda you know just uh, don't lose enough just you know have a good grip over yourself and at ca final i don't expect anybody else to do that for you right you are adults right so no no pampering no nothing nothing okay no uh, because you will become a ca okay right so anyways everybody tell me have you got an outline of the uh, 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 of the uh, 19 chapters okay do we have class on saturday sunday as well yes so uh, i'll give you an off whenever uh, i need it like you know i won't be able to conduct the class so maybe one of the days you might have an off on saturday and sunday you will have a class and uh, and some generally uh, sunday you won't have a class in between i anticipate a 3 4 days uh, uh, break in between because i need to travel so i will let you know so that's what i said very simple okay only the only reason when you are not in the class is when i am not there in the class otherwise you are always there right so 20 sessions planned before christmas we should be good with the completion of the class considering the holidays or so which might come in between uh, 20 classes are planned but if required maybe i can add one or two more classes also okay so i hope that's fine with all of you because i uh, though it's a fast track class i plan to i will and i'm going to give you the entire content i won't leave you without that you know because that won't give me peace of mind and listen until i do the uh, justice to the entire uh, delivery of the subject okay so i became a chartered accountant in jan 2009 so that's been quite some time now in 2008 i wrote my exams uh, 2005 it was ca foundation it was pe1 at my time so professional education one pe1 examination right then in 2006 i wrote pe2 right that was the intermediate exams then after that from 1st august 2006 to 31st july 2009 three years did my article ship in deloitte right so and now in 2008 my attempt was due so november 2008 i wrote my ca final attempt jan 2009 i cleared and then article ship got over after that in uh, july 2009 and then since september 2009 i started teaching right so that has been my passion and god has been kind enough to always keep me right connected with the students for the uh, teaching of the subject of audit okay so very much the big four experience the auditing standards and the checklist and the work papers and everything which we followed over there always helped me with the good delivery of the uh, subject and again you know standards on auditing is like the eqcs as such like you know that's one of the you know most core area where we you get a such a wonderful understanding of the standards that you start loving the subject of audit so it's a caution and okay all of those you all of those of you who hate audit probably as we proceed in the class you'll start loving the subject right so that's the risk at which you all are right you'll say now ma'am i feel like opening the audit book now ma'am i am do not scared of the subject of audit at all so that's what has been uh, seen so far so i hope the same happens with all of you all okay all good you know the chapters now how many chapters are there 19 in that up to chapter number 11 it is the right chapter number 11 it is the eqcs what is eqcs the engagement and quality control standards how many 46 are there okay and then you have all these special audits like you know what special audits we have we have the audit of the banks then we have the internal audit then the audit of the nbfcs then you have the group audit then you have the esg sdg assurance which is also type of an audit only right then you have the public sector undertakings then you have the due diligence investigations forensic accounting and the digital auditing and the assurance right so these are the special audits that we have 
है ना बैंक एंड एन बी एफ सी इट इज इन फोर्टीन ए फोर्टीन बी राइट इंटरनल ऑडिट इज इन चैप्टर नंबर सिक्सटीन ग्रुप ऑडिट चैप्टर नंबर थर्टीन ई एस जी एस डी जी एटीन राइट देन पी इज दी राइट वॉट यू से पब्लिक सेक्टर अंडरटेकिंग विच इज फिफ्टीन देन ड्यू डिलीजेंस दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर सेवनटीन एंड डिजिटल ऑडिटिंग इज चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेल्व एंड देन चैप्टर नंबर नाइनटीन इज रिगार्डिंग दी professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor okay right yes now what we will do in the class right to begin with our discussion in this particular batch we will start with chapter number 19 right we will start and we will end with right the entire chapter number 19 Right, so that one good part of our syllabus, like if you see in your books, it's a huge chapter over there. Right, the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor. Right, the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor. Right, so it's starting from page number nineteen point one. To nineteen point one three zero, so like one thirty pages over there, right? So this entire chapter is what we will, you know, target to finish first, and then after that we will go for a mixture of the standards and our binge PDD. You know, binge PDD, these others, bank, internal audit, and BFC, and all of that. Like we do some standards, then we do group audit, then we do some standard, and we do internal audit. Right, so likewise, I will take you. Right, so taking it further over there, so that you know not that we've done standards, but other chapters all remaining, or or other chapters in one go. No, right, we will have a nice tossed approach. You know, we'll toss all of them together and proceed with our studies. Right, all of you, all good. Right, having a notebook in front of you. Sitting in the wonderful ambience at your home, at your library, at your office—I don't know whichever place you are, right? Not lying, you know, comfortably on the sofa with a packet of chips or something, right? So why? Because you are not now watching a World Cup over here, or any football, or kabaddi, or any of the, uh, or any movie, or any Netflix series over here. No, you are preparing for a professional examination. Be professional in your approach. ensure that you have a proper sitting arrangement made for yourself your textbook your notebooks your any other reference material is all next to you in case if you have your intermediate audit ka textbook and notebook even keep that handy you know because some day if you might uh, some concept discussed and then you want to refer to your notes of inter that can also be done right so our class timing obviously we are very particular today it being day 1 we had to you know wait for a few students to join in but apart from that we start at 9 o'clock and then we uh, take a break at 11:15 right so that's going to be 2 hour 15 minutes of the class in the first session right then after that 11:15 to 11:30 is going to be our break for 15 minutes right we'll have a 15 minutes break and then after that the 11:30 to 2 o'clock so that's going to be 2 hour 30 minutes right 2 hour 30 minutes right so 2 hour 15 minutes and 2 hour 30 minutes right so that's 4 hour 45 minutes right 4 hour 45 minutes right so that is like you know if you look into 240 plus 45 right so 285 minutes of the class which we'll have every day right in that say in the beginning 15 to 20 minutes we will revise you know whatever we have uh, studied on the previous day but apart from that for four and a half hours we will be discussing something new right four and a half hour we will be discussing something new okay students generally find the torture to listen to a theory subject continuously for 2 hour 15 minutes and mainly or uh, more so after the break for 2 hour 30 minutes they are like you know waiting and then their attention span goes down so again they say ma'am give one more break or something like that no why take break and all of that so rather you know i have seen that first one or two days you'll find it difficult and you know? maybe or you've already started finding it difficult i don't know but yeah first one or two days you will you learn because you can't even dream of it ki amma how i sit at one place for two hour ma'am not possible ma'am something will happen ma'am nothing will happen don't worry okay so what will happen no you will even be able to increase your stamina 
you know of sitting at one place and the stamina is not physical stamina only it is mental stamina also na ki for two hours continuously you are able to sit at one place and study you know continuously without going away so that will be very beneficial you will be trained in this fast track batch for sitting for those long hours of study you understand so you know that's what now we are not, i'm not here to pamper you you know the pampering no that is after exams after result after becoming ca and you know, right now i'm here to you know discipline you over there like i told you you know military discipline type of okay but don't worry right you'll keep on writing so keep writing you know like you know they, you have to keep on writing whatever notes i make whatever i write always there should be a pen in your hand or there should be a highlighter either you are writing in the textbook or in the notebook so that keeps you awake you know that keeps you alert and you know what happens when you are listening to it you think you remember you think you know you say you understood you think i don't need to write it but no that moment you've understood but maybe after 20 days or maybe after 2 months or maybe after 8 months when you open the book again the thought concept may not come to you right so that is why what is very important is that you have the writing you have some link some association something written in your books which immediately you know makes you click ke oh yeah 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 i remember it oh yes yes this was that point you know so don't be over confident about your memory or something like that you know if you remember nothing like it but on the safer side better keep a note in your book right better keep a note of that in your book okay right would you like to share with me how many marks did you get in inter audit 80 85 40 45 because without getting any marks in inter audit you would not have come for final audit Oh yeah, sixty-two, forty-three, fifty-eight. Okay, forty-five. Okay, fifty, fifty-seven. Oh my God, I have good auditors on the way. Right, fifty-one, forty-nine. Okay, for how many of you audit was the villain? Like audit was like the. Okay, audit was like the. subject you know exact 40 ha huh? this exact 40 wale people are no wastage of efforts okay right so yeah rene dona ma'am okay so <laughs> so okay you've already put a ca before your name so because you are anticipating that uh, you know in your gmail account you've already put a ca so maybe later on it is uh, available or not so <laughs> you've already created so yeah yeah so soon to be okay yeah that's positive very optimistic very nice i was i glad was glad to see that okay i after becoming ceo also i don't have ca in my gmail you before becoming ceo itself you put a gmail so everybody's own styles over there okay right so yes all good let's begin with our discussion now yes all of you how many of you the books are with you or many of you last minute yesterday night took admission today morning took admission then got the serial key and then you uh, know what if someone else gets ca with same name before me oh yeah so conservative approach okay yet to receive the book okay right so please follow up with the team and take the tracking details and all of that right so that you receive the book because that improves the efficiency you know of your studies in the class if you have the book at hand but never it's okay do you have the study material of icai have you cut the ribbon of the study material yeah so till that time take out that material of the institute and you can go to chapter number 19 over there right so or you can just you know uh, institute study material pdf copy you know you can download it from the icai website and take and the or take that on hand because i have you know word by word tallied that every content which is there in the study material of icai ai is also there in our books right so it's going to be uh, very much convenient for you that way also okay right so with all of that let's begin hai na shuru kare okay right so let's begin with our discussion on the subject okay 
right so now first coming to the chapter number 19 which is regarding the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor right what did i tell you exam approach that you are having the weightage of the right what you say approximately on an average 10 marks from this particular chapter okay just to give you an idea of you know what is not there in your new syllabus as compared to the old syllabus because you know at some places you may dash across those questions when you are seeing the rtp or uh, mtp of the previous attempts right so just giving you a rough idea over there Right, so there used to be an um, audit, a chapter called as the peer review and quality review, which is now no longer there in your syllabus. Right, not there at all. Right, then there used to be a chapter on the automated environment, which is again now not there. Right, the automated environment. Then you had this management audit and the operational audit. Right, the management and the operational audit right so again that chapter has been deleted right it is no longer applicable for your exams right then there used to be a chapter on the audit committee and corporate governance that is the sebi lodr and a sebi listing obligation and disclosure requirement regulation right which is again now not there then there used to be a chapter called as the liabilities of the auditor under companies act and income tax act that chapter also now not there so though in the new syllabus we say this chapter number 19 ka title kya hai in the new syllabus this chapter number 19 what is the title professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor this liabilities of the auditor has got nothing to do with that earlier syllabus chapter of the liabilities of the auditor here they are talking about the liabilities of the auditor under the Chartered Accountants Act only, not under the Companies Act or the in, uh, Income Tax Act. They are talking about the liabilities under the Chartered Accountants Act only, not under the Companies Act or the Income Tax Act. Then earlier syllabus, old syllabus, there used to be a full chapter on the company audit and a section 139 to section 148 of the Companies Act 2013. Now that entirely has been deleted, only what has been kept is the section 143 and the duties of the company auditor. So if you see as such many chapters in entirety have been deleted from your syllabus. But what has been added new over there? One I told you the 10 standards, then the chapter on the digital auditing and assurance and then the ESG and the SDG assurance, right? So these are like the real new additions over there okay right so anyways that's just a rough outline of you know there has been some deletions oh yes even the uh, chapter on the audit under the fiscal laws tax audit and the section 44 ab right uh, 44 ad and then also after that the form 3 cd right so the chapter under the fiscal laws even that has been deleted from your syllabus right so quite a lot of your burden has been reduced over there Right, so fiscal laws deleted, company audit deleted, SEBI LODR deleted, peer review, quality review not there, automated environment replaced with digital auditing and assurance. Right, so that's just to give you an idea. Okay, right, so now let's come to the, right, uh, what you say, uh, first chapter for our discussion, right, first is our last chapter. So we are, you know, using the LIFO method over there, right, we're coming to chapter number 19, which is regarding the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditors, okay, right, so like, you know, uh, just as a chartered accountant, we are a professional, similarly, an architect, an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, a company secretary, even they are the professionals, Right, even a lawyer is a professional, even a doctor is a professional. Right, so now say what a doctor did, right, he is a surgeon. Okay, so now he is uh, suppose some, some problem in the stomach, that is why some stomach surgery is to be done. So that is why the doctor, you know, uh, gave the anesthesia to the patient and then after that cut the stomach and then, you know, did whatever operation was required to be done and then again stitch back the stomach. 
and then after the operation was over they again do a sonography or an x-ray to check you know whether the problem has been solved and that time they find out okay oh my god one of the scissors which they used during the course of the surgery is there in the stomach only and it being in the stomach only they have stitched the stomach oh my god right so is it not the ethical responsibility of the surgeon okay when they are doing a surgery they should not forget any you know any uh, knife or needle or any scissor inside the stomach itself right is it not their ethical responsibility very much it is their ethical responsibility like you know say some engineers or architects they constructed some bridge and in the construction of that bridge or tunnel they used very low quality material and that is why that entire bridge collapsed and say thousands of people died so is it again not unethical of using low quality material in the construction of the bridge it is unethical right it is unethical over there right so just as you know you living in a society in a civilized world you have the ethics Right? that is you should be honest right that is you should be not creating any harm to others and all of that right as a human being you should be having some ethics and as a professional human being as a professional person you should be having some professional ethics right you should be having some professional ethics like you know can you tell me some advertisements which you see in the newspaper like you know which uh, you see advertisement like some black friday sale or some you know uh, some uh, mintra sale or a geo or you know some on tv or youtube or you know zomato do you see some advertisements of sale can you mention a few to me any offers any sales that you can uh, mention to me hospitals also they say angioplasty angiography at 50000 rupees or you know some offers and schemes over there right yes no you don't know any offer you don't read any newspaper all of you okay right so yeah big billion sale ha huh? amazon great indian festival and all of that you have like you know i don't know when the other day i had gone to a mall to Uh, multiplex to see a movie and then there were some uh, outlets also over there one outlet over there if i am not wrong it was some cantabil you know some cantabil brand or something can you believe it like what was the offer over there like at least i couldn't believe it it was buy to get eight free like seriously like buy two and buy two get two buy two get three buy two get 40% 50% off still digestible but buy two get eight free like if i buy like say two t-shirts 500 500 1000 rupees then for 1000 rupees i am getting the 10 t-shirts right so it's like 100 rupees each t-shirt over there okay so they sell two at the price of 10 exactly right and conditions applied and all of that then they say puma adidas sketchers and a flat 60% off on purchase of three or more products or purchase of two or more products or something like that right you keep on seeing these different types of offers you know like shopper stop you know then there is central uh, centro now that has become it says happiness sale up to 51% off and 50% off or something like that okay have you ever seen right highest price will be build here yeah. right so now is um what does it say have you ever seen any holding of any chartered accountant anywhere like you know say pwc deloitte eny tell yes or what you say kpmg or so which says that you know tax audits at rupees 999 and limited period offer you know do you see any such you know file one itr and get gst return free oh my god right you've already put name ca before your uh, before your name and then a uh, prefix ca before your name then you already have a scheme with you file one itr and get gst return free okay so let me tell you in that case it would be unethical it would be guilty of professional misconduct under the chartered accountants act 1949 right it is not 
right it is not ethical it is not allowed for a chartered accountant so just as a doctor is not supposed to leave a caesar in the stomach while doing the surgery similarly a ca while doing the checking audit of the financial statements is not supposed to leave any fraud error in the financial statements and say oh these financial statements are true and fair no I know that detection of fraud and error is not the primary objective of audit, but should I not be skillful? Should I not have professional competence and due care while doing my audit? Yes. Right. So can I say, oh, if you file two tax return, one tax return free, or you know, first hundred clients we get thirty percent off? It says no. all this is not allowed so the way you see shopper stop or any hospital like apollo or max hospital advertising you don't see any such hoardings when you go on the highway or you don't see any such hoardings on the mg road of your city of any ca firm abc and company chartered accountants or def and company chartered accountants no do you ever see any of such advertisements no why because ca is we are governed by the provisions of the chartered accountants act okay right so with that we come to our discussion of the chartered accountants act 1949 in each chapter which i discuss with you i am first going to give you the menu card of that chapter you know menu card Right. Okay. If you go to a restaurant, also they give you the menu, you know, and then from the menu, all what is served at the restaurant is mentioned over there, right? And then out of that, you select. Here, you are not allowed to select anything, but you know, okay, this is all what we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. Right. This is what we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. Okay. So one in this chapter, very important. We are going to take an overview of the code of ethics. Right, so the code of ethics divided under the part one, two, three, four. Right, so we are going to take an overview of the code of ethics. Then, very important discussion which we are going to have is regarding the fundamental principles, which are also called as the ethical requirements for a chartered accountant. Right, the ethical requirements. ethical right integrity objectivity professional competence due care confidentiality and the professional behavior then right what happened on 15th august 15th august 19 yes 47 what happened yeah yes oh yes that was the day of independence right independence okay so what does it mean yeah 1947 independence that means there are no britishers there are no east india company who is going to rule our country we are going to be having our own democracy our own constitution and we will be functioning as an independent country you know no britishers coming and ruling us so similarly as an auditor should it be that the client is ruling the auditor auditor we are telling you no no fraud to be reported then even if there is fraud don't report so then you know the client is like the britisher over there and you like an auditor saying okay okay you said no reporting no problem we will no report but you give my fee of 20 lakh yes is that right not at all right will you be like the uh, dependent country or like the independent country will you be like the pre independent era or the post independent era 100% you have to be like the post independent era that means you have to have the compliance with the requirement of the independence right independence of the auditor is non negotiable it is non negotiable you say i am just having one share ma'am of jio limited if i can do audit ma'am no problem one share ma'am why you are making so much fuss no one share also out you cannot be appointed as an auditor of that company right so independence you know title of audit report when auditor issues an audit report what is the title of his audit report exactly independent auditors report iar independent auditors report 
यू डोंट से सेमी इंडिपेंडेंट ऑडिटर्स रिपोर्ट और नॉन इंडिपेंडेंट ऑडिटर्स रिपोर्ट हाँ इट इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑडिटर्स रिपोर्ट सो वन ऑफ द वट यू से हेरोइक टर्म है नो वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म ऑफ आर डिस्कशन इज द इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ द ऑडिटर right then after that we discuss a few sections of the chartered accountants act sections of the chartered accountants act like we discuss section um, what do you say section 22 members who are deemed to be in practice right then we also discuss about the section 8 disabilities for membership when you cannot become a member of the icai right then the company is not to engage in accountancy right then un penalty for falsely claiming to be a member then also the disciplinary mechanism then the maintenance of the branch offices right so not all few few little little few sections of the chartered accountants act we will discuss now then after the sections of the ca act a main discussion a main bread and butter of this chapter is the schedules to the chartered accountants act 1949 i should not find a single student who is not paying attention in the class okay right so second discussion what we have over there is regarding the schedules to the chartered accountants act right you have the first schedule to the chartered accountants act and the second schedule to the chartered accountants act in which you have the 34 clauses of ethics right so like in caro you have clauses and tax audit you used to have clauses but now tax audit not applicable in ethics also you have the clauses and okay not to advertise not to charge fees on percentage basis take noc it's all given under different different clauses right so you have to know all the 34 clauses of the ethics over there this is going to be the heartbeat of this chapter and the most important part of the discussion in this chapter and then apart from the schedules you have a few notifications which have been given by the council of the icai right you have the notifications then you also have a few guidelines given by the icai right then apart from that there is a very trending discussion latest like you know new arrival you know when you go to a store you see new arrival or on youtube also you see oh a new video has been uploaded on the channel so likewise in this chapter relatively new not see one there is something which is brand new means which is like first time it is applicable you know just made applicable type and something which is relatively new right so something which is relatively new is your no clar right no clar what is no clar it is the non compliance with the laws and regulations n o c l a r non compliance n o c l a r laws and regulations then right? so non compliance with the laws and regulations right already institute one time they asked a question right so already opening ribbon cutting ceremony of this concept has been done no clar right but can they ask a question again yes again we could see your question on the no clar okay so this is to give you an outline of our discussion in this particular chapter right so beginning with the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor in the 34 clauses we are going to discuss the clause numbers and we are going to discuss the content of the clause right this number ke clause 1 clause 2 clause 3 clause 4 aise numbers hai aur fir unka content hai ke clause 1 mein kya likha hai clause 2 mein what is written clause 3 mein what is written do i need to know the number yes y e s yes do i need to know the content y e s i need to know the content also do i need to write it in the exam yes so to write it in the exam word by word verbatim not in your own language you have to write it in the study material language in the technical language what you will have to do you will have to learn it by heart learn it by heart and so whenever we draw a heart what does that mean you have to learn it by heart and many students they learn it by heart and dil laga ke dil se padhte hai but they are not able to and anybody guess they learn it by heart they know it they understand it but they are not able to they are not able to retrieve remember 
नहीं बाय हार्ट हो गया ना तो मतलब रिट्रीव हो गया रिमेंबर हो गया आगे का प्रॉब्लम बाय हार्ट है ना हाँ एग्जैक्टली दो दे आर एबल टू रिमेंबर इट लर्न इट बाय हार्ट वॉट दे आर नॉट एबल टू डू इज दे आर नॉट एबल टू राइट इट they are not able to present it they are not able to express it exactly you understand no so you have to take care of that also you understand no if i have to you know make a particular uh, vegetable then i have to put salt i have to put turmeric i have to put chili powder i have to put coriander powder i have to put some other seasonings also and then i make the entire vegetable i can't say no 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 today i want to put only turmeric in my vegetable or today no salt no nothing else only turmeric in the vegetable or today only coriander powder tomorrow only chili powder you know nobody will uh, be the food will not be edible so you say no no this attempt i'm only going to learn next attempt i'm only going to write next attempt i'm only going to revise no everything the chili powder the turmeric powder coriander powder oil mustard seed and our cumin seeds everything has to come in this attempt only you know so that it is well cooked you know so that your preparation for the subject you understand no is turmeric required yes is chili powder also required yes only turmeric no only chili powder no so you say ma'am i know how to write everything but if you don't know only what you'll write you understand no so first you have to understand it after understanding you have to write it after as uh, so after understanding you have to learn it after learning it you should be able to write it while writing also presentation should be sundar presentation should be sundar what is sundar sundar What is sundar? Ah, beautiful, attractive, beautiful. When you look at Taj Mahal, you say, "Wow, marvel of the world!" You know, it's beautiful. Like so much of marble used, and how the domes are created, and how the minarets are made. You like, you know, you would say, "Okay, seriously, like this is the wonder of the world." and and you see that in your area some uh, you know government workers they've gone on strike and that is why at the garbage collection bin you know the garbage is not being collected by the government people and that is why every day the garbage is being dumped and dumped and dumped and dumped over there even though if you pass through that area like you know you it's like that horrible over there you understand no so you just think if whether it should be taj mahal or whether it should be like that accumulated garbage over there you know like like you know no hai na let it be modest also maybe not as great as the taj mahal but maybe not as dirty also so let it be good calm presented you know well presented well prepared for paper answer to be written okay because you have to take care of it if i know everything in audit but i can't write it useless i can write but i don't know anything useless absolutely useless right you have to have all the skills okay right so i will make you write in the class a heart with a w right so whenever heart and w is there they'll say writing you know what you can interpret it as from your heart you are going to do the writing practice right so from your heart so if it has to come from your heart you have to remember it and after that you have to do the writing practice and now how to do writing practice you have to take a blank paper on the blank paper you have to write down the number question number 1 and then there is the pen in your hand with that pen you have to write down the answer in the way you are going to write down in the exam this is called as writing practice making notes is not writing practice reading the answer 10 times is not writing practice copy writing is one type of writing practice but writing on your own as if you are writing in the exam is authentic writing practice authentic writing practice i don't want any manipulative any cheating writing practice to be done locha karne ka nahi otherwise institute will do locha with you 
you understand that no okay right so with that yes this is the outline of what we are going to discuss in our first chapter over there that is the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor right so overview fundamental principle independence right and then after that a few sections of the chartered accountants act then the schedules that's going to be the main discussion and then the notifications guidelines no clar and the other discussions over there okay these are a few sections apart from that also a few other sections also we will be going through okay right so now coming to the overview of the code of ethics right coming to the overview of the code of ethics okay right so if i come over here to the committees of the institute right you have the non standing committees and under the non standing committees one of the committee do you see it over here everyone right you have the ethical standard board of the icai and then you have the objectives of this ethical standard board and then the achievements recent decisions huh? these recent decisions are also included in your syllabus right the 33 or 35 some 30 plus the recent decisions of the esb are also included in your syllabus right then the clarifications then the publications then the guidelines and features right so advertisement guidelines then council general guidelines know your ethics ca logo guidelines and then over here you have the code of ethics right the volume 1 volume 2 volume 3 volume 3 is the case study case law referencer type you know that's like the case law referencer so whatever like you know income tax may you have case laws dt idt you have the case laws similarly your uh, you know whatever cases or what you say whatever orders have been passed against the chartered accountants right so there is this case laws ref case laws referencer book which has been given over there right then apart from this case law referencer mainly you have the code of ethics the volume 1 right so this is the code of ethics right issued by the icai right so you have the mention of the no clar and all over there right you have the mention of the no clar and all of those points so there okay where is the sound coming from okay right the of oh, yes the entire fifth edition and all of that and then this is the overview of the code of ethics also right so our, now this is the huge document over there it is 330 pages is the first part and then the volume 2 is again running into like so many pages so it's not that the entire discussion is there for us but yeah based on this this particular chapter has been prepared you know this is how the study material but this is the base material for it and this is the base material for that particular chapter okay right so if you want any more understanding apprehension of this particular chapter you know where you need to come to right you need to come to the ethical standard board of the icai right so these are the members of the ethical standard board and what are the terms of reference right the work the objective of this ethical standard board of the icai right so the revised requirement and then the no clar i told you know the provisions regarding the no clar right then the forms then register on ca connect portal and all of that okay right so now if i come to the module 2 right so if i come to the module 2 over here right you see the chapter number 19 which is the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor right in which they first given an introduction to ethics and why code of ethics is a necessity and then after that you have the overview of the code of ethics in which we have the part 1 2 3 4 then coming to the fundamental principles after the fundamental principles coming to the independence right coming to the discussion regarding huge discussion regarding the independence then no clar which we will discuss at a later point of time okay right so with that the clock says that it's time for a break and then we meet again right so i stop the meeting now and then we start again at 11:30 okay right so we start on time so please be back on time